Hey everyone, I'm the Canadian Lad and today I watched the teaser of Deadpool 3 at 0.2 fabric speed and found some amazing hidden details and easter eggs. Now I've decided to keep this video sponsor free so you lads can enjoy it without any interruptions. Other than the YouTube ads of course, I mean those help me live. Anyway, without wasting any of your time, let's begin the trailer breakdown. Happy birthday to you! <laughs> Um, it's been a challenging few years, for sure, but I'm happy. That is because of each and every one of you. I am the luckiest man alive. <laughs> Make a wish, buddy. So the trailer opens with everyone celebrating Wade's birthday. And notice the cake has a non-edible photo and Wade is not even in it. It's a selfie that has everyone from the X-Force as well as Dopender and Vanessa. But we can now see Shatterstar in the family as well. Meaning in Deadpool 2, Wade didn't just save Peter but he also saved the entire team. Which also means Brad Pitt's Vanisher is still alive somewhere in the MCU now. Now I love Ryan Reynolds acting in this whole scene. Look at how serious he gets in moments like these and that's what makes this franchise so special. Director Sean Levy and Ryan Reynolds just know the exact balance between humor and dark plots. And if you think about it, Deadpool who will never die is cutting his birthday cake here while everyone else who is clapping is bound to die one day. So if anything, it's a celebration of their lives, not his. And that is probably what's making Wade a bit emotional here. On to the next clip. Wade Wilson? Who's asking? Whoa, 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 whoa. Is that supposed to be scary? Pegging isn't new for me, friendo, but it is for Disney. Okay, so we now see Wade is being visited by the TVA authority. Now, if you have watched Loki and my Loki breakdowns, I'm just gonna assume you already know who the TVA are, so I won't go into details. However, I just hope the writers of this movie do a good job explaining who the TVA are in the movie. Because if they don't do a good job with it, anyone who hasn't watched Loki will have a hard time understanding this film. But of course, we have Ryan and Sean, and I'm pretty sure they've taken care of it already. Anyway, notice the apartment number now says 17, whereas Wade's apartment apartment number in the previous movie used to say 69. Now the MCU has a very odd fascination with the number 17. For example, take a look at this. Unlock 17A. My signal. Open Northwest Section 17. So Deadpool's apartment number used to say 69 when he was under Fox Studios. And now under Disney it says 17. And I absolutely love how Deadpool immediately breaks the fourth wall to crack a joke at Disney. That too about pegging. We then see one of the TVA hunters grabbing Wade's wig and another hunter then stepping on it. Now this could be a metaphor that Wade Wilson did try to live a normal happy life but as soon as the TVA abducts him, his wig aka the normal life is now gone. And of course we see the red marble logo incorporating Deadpool's style. On to the next clip. <sighs> Mr. Wilson, you appear to have soiled yourself while unconscious. I wasn't unconscious. Who are you? Why am I here? Walk with me. Wait. You are special. Then we see an unconscious Wade coming back to his senses inside the TVA HQ. And he's being interrogated by the character called Paradox, who's played by none other than Matthew McFadden. Now for those of you who don't know the character Mr. Paradox, he's a presiding judge in the comics, where his ruling almost erased Jennifer Walters aka She-Hulk from history. He has two other colleagues who you probably heard about and they are Mr. Mobius and Mr. Ouroboros. Now it really caught me off guard when Paradox tells Wade that he defecated on himself when he was unconscious. But Wade responds, I wasn't unconscious. That's pure Deadpool there. Now Paradox seems to have a golden device on his hand which looks similar to the TVA Tempet but slightly slimmer. This could be a more advanced version of the Tempet we've seen in Loki. Then we see a time stream at the TVA hallway which resembles the time tree of Loki. Now for those of you who haven't watched Loki yet, the world tree or Idrisal is something Loki created at the end of season 2 where he sits in the middle of all timelines and keeps it stable. Now I'm seeing a lot of comments saying this particular character could be a He Who Remains variant, but I don't think so. 
so. I don't think Marvel will want to do anything with Jonathan Majors right now, and this could just be another scientist at the TVA. Then in this shot, we see Wade wearing a blue uniform and staring at his Deadpool suit. I'm not sure if this scene is also taking place inside the TVA, but by the looks of it, it could be the TVA. And notice they have even provided Wade with his own name tag, meaning they have employed or ID'd Wade into the system. So in one way or the other, we might see Deadpool working for the TVA in the movie. Or I could be entirely wrong, and this could be Wade living his normal life on Earth, but going through a midlife crisis as we've seen at the beginning of the trailer. Next clip. This is your chance to be a hero among heroes. I smell what you're stepping in, Sensei. Your little cinematic universe is about to change forever. I'm the Messiah. I am. Here we see a quick shot of Deadpool in what looks like a forest and it's snowing there. Now keep this in mind, I'm gonna talk about it in a minute. Mr. Paradox then shows Wade a bunch of footage from Avengers Age of Ultron and Thor Ragnarok. And if you notice, here on the screen we can see Deadpool wearing a black suit and it looks like he's giving a speech, right? Well, guess what? This is a real life video of Ryan Reynolds accepting an Emmy Award for his soccer team documentary Wrexham. And this is not the first time that the Deadpool universe has acknowledged the existence of Ryan Reynolds, the Actor. Now all of the screens look like CCTV footage from multiple locations, and I think what's happening here is Mr. Paradox is about to send Deadpool on a mission. And just before that, he's briefing him about where he's going and what he might come across. Which brings me back to this location. Don't you think this location and the footage from Age of Ultron are connected? I mean Age of Ultron is the only Avengers movie that actually had two mutants in the team. So it would make sense if Deadpool revisits the events of that movie. Or this could be the forest from the movie Logan. But I doubt they'd revisit that, since Ryan and Hugh Jackman pretty much confirmed in the announcement video that they're not even gonna touch the timeline of Logan. Now if I have to speculate a reason why a footage from Thor Ragnarok could be here, well if you think about it, except for Thor Ragnarok, no other MCU movies are outright comedy movies. And Deadpool is at least 70% comedy. So I'm assuming director Sean and Ryan must really like Thor Ragnarok. Therefore they might have found a way to connect that movie to this one. In the next shot, we see Wade Wilson giving a salute to Captain America. And all of this footage of Cap is from Captain America the Winter Soldier. And notice there are two screens on the deck showing a flow of time, which could be the timelines of the universes we're seeing on screen. Then we see a convoy going across the desert. And notice if I zoom in, we can see this car carrying a giant figure on its roof. Or this could be some sort of a weapon. And then we're introduced to one of the main villains of Deadpool, aka Cassandra Nova. Now Cassandra is the twin sister of Professor Charles Xavier. When Cassandra Cassandra was still in the womb, Professor Xavier sensed Cassandra's evil presence and tried to kill her right in the womb using his psychic powers. Because that's what normal people do, I guess? Anyway, this led to their mother Sharon to have a miscarriage. Now, while the doctors thought Cassandra is stillborn, but she actually survived and grew in a sewer over many years, crafting a new body for herself. During this time, she plotted revenge against her brother Charles. Then we see Deadpool sitting inside the jaws of what looks like a giant monster. Judging by these fangs and these snakes, this could be the Savage Land from the comics. Now if this is not the Savage Land, then my second theory is this could be some place from Thor Ragnarok. Because the color scheme and the overall design look an awful lot like Hulk's bed from when he was in Sakaar. Then we see Deadpool walking inside a casino, and here we see a glimpse of Wolverine for the first time in the MCU. As a comic book reader, as soon as I saw this scene, I immediately knew what they were going with. This is Wolverine's alter ego, aka Patch. But one thing that caught my eye is that this guy doesn't seem as jacked as Hugh Jackman. So I'm wondering if someone else is playing the character Patch could be a variant of our Wolverine. Let me know your thoughts on this. Now in the comics, the alias Patch was adopted by Wolverine during his time in Madripoor, which is a criminal underworld. Now as Patch, Wolverine took on a more covert and detective-like role, operating in the shadows to gather information and deal with threats. The Patch persona allowed Wolverine to navigate the murky waters of Madripoor's criminal society without drawing attention to his true identity. And an eye patch is the way to go about it. 
This period in Wolverine's history is known for its noir-like storytelling and greedy adventures. And I'm so happy that I'm not only gonna see Wolverine for the first time in the MCU, but I'm also gonna see one of my favorite versions of Wolverine in live action. Thank you, Marvel. And then we see this epic confession from Wade where he says he's the Messiah, he's the Jesus of the Marvel Universe. And notice the surroundings and the costumes that they're wearing are exactly the same as we've seen at the beginning of the trailer. So this is how I think the movie is gonna play out. Mr. Paradox will abduct Wade, interrogate him, show him the broader multiverse, and then reveal to Wade that he has some kind of a special power that only he possesses, and that's why Mr. Paradox specifically needs Deadpool. And hearing this, Wade being Wade, will think too big of himself and just claim that he is the Jesus of the Marvel Universe. And I love how McFadden was nodding his head to each word Ryan was saying in the scene. On to the next clip. Here we see the tailor putting on the katanas on Deadpool. We actually got a clear view of the tailor in the TV spot that was released during the Super Bowl. And here we get a much broader view of the whole room. Now one of the posters says unravel I think? And I can't really make out what this one says. However, we can see the red spandex, indicating that Taylor is ready to sew up a new suit for Wade Wilson. And once the suit is ready, we see that he has added a zipper, a brand new comic accurate belt, a spank on the left cheek, a spank on the right. Oh, look at those bounds. See Ryan Reynolds, um, <clears throat> cold plates on the gloves and underneath the barrel of the gun. Now there is something written on the muzzle of the gun, and it says smile and then wait for the flash. Then in this shot inside the elevator, notice the number 943. Now this number in terms of angelic sense means you're meant to achieve great things in life and that you should never give up on your dreams. Now notice the interior of the elevator looks no way close to what we've seen in the Loki series. And this tells me something, and I want to share it with you lads, but please take it with a grain of salt. Salt. I think there might be two versions of the TVA, one that we've seen in Loki led by Mobius and another led by Mr. Paradox. For example, notice when the TVA Minutemen come to arrest Wade, a time door opens behind him and another Minutemen grabs him before they can. Now if they're on the same team, why did this guy attempt to grab Wade's hair if he's already being apprehended from behind? So the theory is, the TVA that we know of came to Deadpool first, due to his actions at the end of Deadpool 2. But the other TVA, which is run by Mr. Paradox, managed to capture him first to save the multiverse. Now this is just a theory, so please don't curse me if this doesn't turn out to be true. And it probably won't. Then we see some classic Deadpool action against the TVA hunters. And please tell me this place doesn't look like the forest from Age of Ultron. But then again, this fallen truck in the background makes me wonder if this is the same jungle from Logan. Oh boy, I'm so excited and confused at the same time. Now in this shot, we see the half-buried 20th Century Fox logo behind Deadpool. And this tells me that the main plot of the movie will be around Disney buying out Fox Studios. But if you were keeping an eye on the leaks, you knew that already. Meaning, we're gonna see that the TVA has pruned the entire X-Men universe. And that would make this place the void at the end of time. Now what's interesting to me is whether Deadpool is trying to save the Marvel Universe or trying to kill the Fox Universe. Because in the comics, he does end up killing the whole Marvel Universe. Either way, Deadpool will be reviving Marvel Studios if anything. You know what I mean? Anyway, coming back to this shot, notice Deadpool has engraved his logo underneath the magazines as well. And at 0.25 x speed, the Smith Air reloads and cocking the slides against his chest just looks way too sexy. First, he tosses the new magazine and then reloads it mid-air. And for the second one, he just lowers the gun and keeps it still, and lets the new magazine slide into it from the top. And once both guns are reloaded, he wrecks the slides against his chest, ready for firing. This is just incredible. The camera work along with the background score are what's been missing in the current MCU. Marvel action used to be one of its kind, but these days they just look like any other action movie. And I'm so happy that Deadpool is finally giving us actions that Marvel is known for. Then we see Elioth devouring a TVA agent. He was even begging Deadpool to save him. 
boy, the R rating is finally gonna give us a glimpse of what a Lyth can really do. Now here we see the remnants of a Leviathan and a broken piece of a Helicarrier. So this place has to be the Void, where all those who are pruned from the Sacred Timeline get sent here. Now in the same shot, we see this military vehicle with some weapons attached to it. And if you notice carefully, it says Canada along with the Canadian flag. Because of course, Ryan Reynolds is Canadian. Now a lot of people are saying this masked man could be Doctor Doom. But I don't think Marvel will ever reveal something as important as Doctor Doom in a trailer. But notice these panels on top of this vehicle. Doesn't it look similar to the convoy that we've seen earlier in the desert? So is this scene taking place before they got pruned to the void? Or is this whole desert inside the void? Let me know your thoughts. Then we see some more Deadpool action, and here the face armor of this TVA hunter comes off as soon as Deadpool slices his knife across his face. Now the reason I'm counting this as a detail is because all these effects are CGI. The blood isn't real, neither is the face plate coming off. So hats off to the VFX team for such incredible attention to detail. In the next shot, we see Deadpool fighting another team of adversaries who are definitely not the TVA. Now this guy probably belongs to the other team who wears masks. And judging by the background pieces, this is taking place in the same location. So it's safe to say a big battle will take place where Deadpool will fight against multiple groups of enemies. And then we get a close-up shot of Deadpool firing his guns. But notice the knuckle design on the suit doesn't match with our Deadpool. Meaning this is probably a variant of Deadpool who will also join in this fight. And they're just trying to hide it with clever editing. But they don't know at 0.25 x speed you can see everything. And I love this shot where Deadpool is signaling the camera to come closer. This is probably Deadpool breaking the fourth wall in the middle of heavy bloodshed. Now I can't be the only one who can see these three distinctive marks on the front seat. This is probably Wolverine's claw marks, which means he was inside this car as well. Then we see Aaron Stanford reprising his role as Pyro from Fox's original X-Men trilogy. Now I'll be honest, I didn't recognize him at first, but seeing the comments I was like, okay, so he's back now. Deadpool then recreates the action scene from the very first movie. I'm just gonna play it out for you so you understand it better. Wait! Wait! On to the final clip. <sighs> Don't just stand there, you ape. Give me a hand up. I'm actually okay, thank you very much. Okay, so Deadpool gets smashed into the fallen 20th century logo, and the trailer is trying to make it seem as if Wolverine did it. But if you notice the background where Wolverine approaches Deadpool, and this shot where Deadpool is thrown into the logo, the surroundings don't match. So these are two different scenes put together for the trailer. Now here comes the biggest easter egg in the trailer. Notice this tattered old comic book line on the ground. This is 2015 Secret Wars number 5. This is by far the biggest hint to given in the trailer that this movie will essentially lead us to Avengers Secret Wars. And this is the very first visual easter egg that actually has Doctor Doom's face on it. And can I just say how awesome this introduction of Wolverine was by only revealing his shadow and not showing his face at all? The TV spot, however, did show us a glimpse at Hugh Jackman's face, but the scene was blurred out. I mean, most of the internet has already seen the leaks, but still as a comic book nerd, I just feel like a kid again when a movie hypes up its hero like that. I love that. I miss that. And I just hope Marvel keeps listening to its fans and gives us what we want. I've seen the trailer so many times, and even after watching it at point epic speed, I still get excited watching it again. This movie may prove to be the most important movie in the MCU since Avengers Endgame. And nobody could have done it better than Ryan Reynolds, Hugh Jackman, and Sean Levy. Now if you like this video, then please give me a thumbs up, grab the subscribe button if you haven't already, and turn notifications on. I'll see you lads in the next to one.